In our story, the word gloomy is used in the sentence, lives a glum, gloomy swimmer. The word gloomy means distressed, pessimistic, or depressed. You can tell by the look on the fish's face that he is gloomy. We hear the word swimmer in the same sentence, lives a glum, gloomy swimmer. So I think we know what a swimmer is. I showed you this picture of the swimmer that's a person so that you can understand that both fish and people can be swimmers. Swimming is the action of propelling yourself through the water. We hear the word pout often in this book since the book is called The Pout Pout Fish. Look at the boy's face. When the corners of his mouth are facing down and he looks almost frustrated, this is called a pout. You'll see this throughout the book. Many times when we use a pout, we are trying to show that we are annoyed. In the book, we see the word weary quite often. Listen to the sentence. So I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Weary and wearies are just different forms of this word. Weary just means to be tired. Listen to the sentence from our book with a wide winning grin. You can see the grin on this monkey's face. It's a big smile. And sometimes your mouth is wide open. I think this monkey has a wonderful grin. In the book, we hear the sentence and a pearl of advice. So, advice is something you can give or share with someone to help them. I have the two signs here because I want you to understand that when you're giving advice, you're helping someone by giving them direction. They have to make a choice, but you're helping them by telling them what you think they should do or how you may do something. With your crosstown frown. So, this word is unusual. We don't hear it a whole lot. It really just means from one side or the other, or extending or stretching across. So that means this is a very big frown stretching from one side of the face to the other. We also heard the word frown. So we frown when we show displeasure or if we don't like something, it might make us sad. Normally, the corners of our mouth turn upside down. That's why sometimes people say, Turn that frown upside down. That would be a smile. You can see in the picture with the word pal. These two look like they are friends. And that's because to be a pal means to be a friend. Who is your best pal? Listen to this sentence. There are a couple words we're going to talk about. His tentacles all trailing in a gentle locomotion. Our word is tentacles. The jellyfish has tentacles that come down from its body. Look how many tentacles there are. In the same sentence, we use the word trailing. That's because the tentacles follow and are slowly pulled by the body of the jellyfish, or they are trailing behind the jellyfish. Listen to the sentence again his tentacles all trailing in a gentle locomotion. The face that cat is making is called a scowl. We hear with your daily scaly scowl. I wish you wouldn't greet us with a grimace and a growl. So some of the other words to describe the expression on this cat's face are grimace, growl, or scowl. They all show that the cat is not happy maybe even grumpy. You kaleidoscope of a mope. So the word is kaleidoscope. 
This word means that all sorts of things are coming together. A kaleidoscope is actually something that would view lots of colors and shapes and patterns that don't go together, coming all together. So it's used in this sentence to explain all the differences about the squid. The squid has many different characteristic traits in our story. Our word is impolite. Here is the sentence. She is slightly impolite. Slightly means a little. So to be impolite is to mean that maybe they're being rude or a little bit mean and they're not acting as we should to someone. Like if you were playing a game and you said, ha ha, I win. That wouldn't be the best way to act. It'd be better to tell them maybe they'll do better next time. Listen, your hulky, bulky, sulky is an unattractive trait. So to sulk is maybe you have a bad attitude about something or you don't want to be cooperative. You just aren't happy and you want everybody to know that. Listen to this, covered on the underside with tiny sucker charms. Well, see the octopus? It's just like the octopus in our story. They're talking about the tiny sucker charms. So what could the underside mean? It means underneath, they are below his legs. The word underside is used instead of underneath or below since it's attached to the octopus. Earlier, we saw the word pal. Chum is another word that we could use to say friend or pal. Silent, I bet you know what silent means. Well, in our story, it says in a silent silver shimmer. Silent just means quiet. That means as the other fish came along, nobody heard her coming. Shh. That fish planted a kiss right on Pout Pout Fish. Then it says, Mr. Fish is most astounded. He was surprised and almost in shock. He did not expect that fish to plant a kiss on him. We read in our story, he is stone-faced like a statue. That means that his face froze. As he was shocked and surprised, his face didn't move at all. He didn't even know what to say or what to do. He didn't know how to act at all. It said, then he blinks. So, both of his eyes closed. He went from being still and emotionless with no movement to his face like a statue and blinked, which means he closed both eyes at the same time. Sometimes we blink when someone tries to take a picture of us. We read next for spreading cheery cheeries all over the place. So her face looks happy, overjoyed, just like Mr. Pout Pout Fish in our book, after that silver slender fish came up and gave him a kiss. Oh boy, he's happy now. He says, so I'll smooch, smooch, smooch. Smooch, well, what does smooch mean? In the book, you saw him give a kiss. That's because smooch means to kiss. I'm so glad that you came to learn new words with me today. This was so much fun. Read the book again now that you know these words and see if you can remember what they are. Then come back here and double check yourself. You did an awesome job. I'll see you next time. Bye.